How's it going everybody? My name is Eric and in this video I'm going to show you how to remove or replace the keys on a Dell laptop. Specifically this is a Dell Latitude but it will work on Inspirons and it will work on Dell XPS's as well. Very similar key design if not identical. Minor differences. Strictly going to be key removal and installation. I will have other Dell keyboard specific videos I will link to in the description for you to check out if you need to see how to reassemble a key switch or how to just clean the keyboard or whatever link to those are in the description thank you guys so much for watching if you haven't already please give the video a thumbs up if you aren't already subscribed subscribe so you don't miss another video and let's get into the key removal but first some tips the hardest keys that i believe to remove on this keyboard are these little rectangular ones there's just not a lot of workspace to get your tools up underneath the entire top row are the same key designs as down here with the up down left right page up so all those are going to be the same type of removal the square keys are pretty easy to remove and that's all of your normal square keys all of these alt controls windows keys this control key down here is a little bit bigger but it's the same the backspace enter and shift are all similar designs so those will all overlap the same way that you do it. And the space bar is its own beast of a key. We'll do that by itself. It has two switches on it. I believe the shift key has two switches on it as well. And then some support bars, which make it a little bit different than the squares, but it's still very doable. So tools we're gonna use are toothpicks. These are the stronger round pointy toothpicks. I prefer to use these over the weaker toothpicks. I'll show you how to remove keys using these. You can also use a small flathead screwdriver or some sort of other small metal prying tool. And if you get yourself into some trouble or you need a little bit more room, you can use a playing card. You don't have to, but I find it to be useful sometimes as well. I highly recommend that you take your time, watch this video all the way through before before you even work on your keys because I show you what the bottom of the key looks like and explain the switches the way that they work so you don't break anything. And I also recommend that you just take off the keycaps, not the underlying switches because those are a lot more delicate and a lot harder to not break once you start messing with those. So just try to remove the keycaps themselves. The first one we're going to remove are these little rectangle ones that are up on the F bar and up down left right. First, I'm going to remove it with a metal tool. Then I'm going to explain the structure of the key. Then we're going to remove it with a toothpick. And then I'm going to show you how to properly reinstall this key. So I'm going to take my metal tool. You can attack it either from the left or the right. I'm going to do this one from the right. I'm going to go just under the keycap. I'm going to put pressure on the bottom of the key with my finger. And I'm just going to push my tool a little bit that way to release the top lobster clips from the key and i'm going to push the key oh i didn't get the second lobster clip so i'm going to push my tool with the pressure on the bottom oh there we go i just released it i'm going to pull the key towards me and lift it up so here's what the underlying switch looks like it's attached to four points on the frame of the laptop they're aluminum hooks the key itself has two bottom awning clips that slide over the bottom nubs and there's two lobster clips on the top that clip and pinch onto these little round things at the top on that scissor switch you're trying to release the top ones with your tool by getting it in between the switch and the top of the keycap slowly you put pressure on the bottom of the key to keep those bottom clips down you don't want to pull those off you want those to slide off after you release the top clips. As you can see, I slightly damaged my key right here by using this metal tool. That's why I recommend using a, a wooden tool when possible. Not that big of a deal. You're not going to see it once I put it back on the keyboard, but still kind of a pain just to have that little chip in the key because my tool was a little bit rough. Now I'm going to remove this bottom arrow key slide under put pressure on the bottom i'm pulling up towards me while i'm pushing the toothpick into the key so i got that first clip removed and i got that second clip removed i slid it underneath in between that scissor mechanism and the keycap and now i'm going to slide that key off with those bottom clips they just disengage as soon as you get those top clips off and as you see can see it's an exact same switch and no damage to that key now to get these guys back on, you're going to take your keycap, you're going to slide it. Slide the key on, 
pull it towards you to engage those awning clips in the bottom of the key on the little nubs on the key switch. And once those awning clips are engaged, you press down on the top of it, it locks in those lobster clips on the top and completely secures the key. You can't see it at this angle. I'm gonna to try to show you guys that I kind of have it at an angle when I'm pulling it towards me. And well, essentially you could see it because I could have the toothpick behind it and I have it at an angle pulled towards me. Once those awning clips are in, press down and the key is reinstalled. You can jiggle it around with your toothpick and make sure that everything is tight and secure. Press it up and down. If something is not attached correctly, do the same type of removal and then try to reinstall it correctly the second time. Now we're gonna work on just a normal square key, which is the pretty much same design as the rectangle key. They're just easier to work on because there's more space. So I'm gonna put pressure on the bottom half of the key, get my prying tool in between the key cap and the scissor switch. Favoring the top half of the key. Did you hear that click? Push it in a little bit more. Second click, push the key up and out of the way and the key cap is perfectly safely removed from the scissor mechanism. You do want to be careful about these nipples. You don't want to push on them too hard or poke them. That's kind of why I favor above that nipple line with my tool to try to avoid cutting or scraping that if possible. Now I'm going to do this key with the wooden tool, pushing down on the bottom half. My toothpick was broken, so I'm going to use the other side. Pushing down on the bottom half, getting up underneath I'm kind of rotating it to give me some leverage. There we go. And we popped off. Pull the key off and it's perfectly removed safely as well. Getting these keys back on are just like the rectangle keys. You go from the bottom, slide on the bottom awning clips and then press down on the top. Slide down these bottom awning clips pulling towards you and then press down on the top. Everything's secure good to go. You should be down at keyboard level with your head most of this removal anyways. You can't see it on camera. I am getting down when I'm working on this so you can see exactly where you're poking with your tool to get in between the keycap and the uh, scissor switch. So get down to keyboard level if you can. Now we're going to work on this backspace key, which is lobster clips at the top, awning clips at the bottom, but there's a support bar that holds everything together. What we're going to remove from the keycap first. So if you go from the side of the key, you can see the support bar if you pry it up a little bit. Then you're going to get your tool between the keycap and the support bar, pull towards you just a little bit, and it'll unclip the support bar from one side of the key. And I'm just following the support bar. There we go. And it removed the two support bar clips from the key and then that now turns it back into a normal square style key where there's one switch under here we're going to go underneath we're going to put pressure on the bottom of the key get our tool in between the key cap and the switch and then unlock these two lobster clips push the key off and lift it up switch is in perfect condition key cap in perfect condition as well so to get this key back on it's easier if you get this support bar out there's two metal little hooks that it just slides into so you're going to remove your support bar turn your key cap over lace your support bar into the channel along the bottom border of your key then you're going to flip it up a little bit slide the bars into where they go on the keyboard you can see two little holes Flip your key down, push it away from you a little bit, press it down slightly, and then pull it towards you, locking in those awning clips on that scissor switch, and then press it down, locking in those lobster clips. That should be your key completely reassembled. If you're having issues with it, remove it again carefully and reinstall it again carefully. Now we're going to take a look at the shift key. However, I'm going to use a toothpick method this time. This key has one support bar along the bottom, and it also has two scissor switches on it. So you do want to be careful not to put too much pressure. You might want to attack it from one side, get those un unclipped, and then attack it from the other side. But we have to get the support bar off first. So we're going to lift the key up with our toothpick. And I can get my toothpick in between the support bar and the key cap pretty easily on this model. But if you're having trouble getting enough room, you can go corner to corner with a playing card and that can give you enough leverage on the key cap to get underneath where you need to go and then you're going to slide your tool. I'm only using the tip of my tool just enough to get that support bar unclipped from the two parts of the bottom of the key. Now that the support bar is gone we're going to go from this side first 
I'm gonna put bottom pressure on the key, get my toothpick in there, and then pop up the two lobster clips right there. Now we're gonna go from this side, bottom pressure on key, and we got the lobster clips released from this scissor mechanism on that side as well. Looks a lot more complicated once the key's off, but you can see the support bar, the two scissor switches, and then our nipple was in the middle there. So that's why I went from one side. I really don't have the length of my tool to poke it through the center of that switch to the other side. That's why I went from both sides. Now for the reinstallation, it's just like our backspace. You're gonna remove your support bar, put the support bar on the bottom part of your key cap. Press that support bar in, rotate that support bar out a little bit like that. Press it into the channels on the shift. You can see them. They're on the actually on the keyboard. Then you're going to rotate your key down, press it gently away from you, push down gently, pull towards you gently, and then press down on the top, locking in those lobster clips and reattaching your shift key perfectly. Last but not least, we're going to be working on the space bar key. This key is more difficult to remove because it has two support bars that we're going to have to remove. And then it also has two scissor switch mechanisms, one right here and one right here, that we're going to have to attack from both sides. But first, we have to disconnect the support bars to give us some more room to work with. So we're going to go from this side, pry up a little bit get underneath the bottom support bar. I'm gonna put pressure on the top of the key. You're usually putting pressure on the opposite of what you're working on because you're balancing out the key from completely ripping off the keyboard. So I'm putting top pressure on it as I'm pulling towards me, removing that support bar. And then I'm gonna follow that support bar just with the tip of my toothpick along the bottom of the key. You're hearing it unclip, clip, clip. There we go. So that bottom support bar is completely detached from the key cap. I'm gonna do the same to the top support bar. Get underneath, put a little bit of pressure on the bottom of the key with the tip of my toothpick. Follow across the top, clip, clip, clip. It just removed the clip off the top of the support bar. Now we're going to remove the lobster clips from the right side by going underneath. Got our toothpick in between the key cap and the bottom scissor switch. I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure on the bottom of the key while I'm pushing in and lifting, trying to get those top lobster clips removed. And it gave me enough wiggle room, literally, to where the key is completely removed on this side. But I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, this left side. Lift up underneath, put bottom pressure on this part of the key while I'm lifting, trying to get in between and re remove those lobster clips. And then I'm gonna push, oh, it reattached a little bit of support bar while I was putting bottom pressure. So I'm just going to separate that really quick and then lift our key off. Look how complicated that is with all of those little clips and points that you can break. Once this key's removed, you can clean in here if that's what you're doing, or you can repair whatever part you needed to repair. I didn't even have to remove this support bar. That's literally just giving this plastic key more structure. It's top support in. Sometimes you do get a little bit of toothpick dust in your key or it breaks off a little bit. You can blow that out or scrape it out, whatever. Our scissor switches are in perfect condition. In order to reinforce install this, you're going to want to take off the bottom support bar and you do that with your tool, unhook one side and then unhook the other side. Take your key, find which side of the key is the top, which side of the key is the bottom and it's pretty easy to tell based off of the way that the clips are. You can see these are the lobster clips here. These are the awning clips here. Awning clips go on the bottom so that means this bottom support bar will set in here like this. Line it up, press it in. It should clip in to five spots, one on each side by the ends, three towards the center. And then you're gonna rotate it out a little bit. You're gonna have to get these hooks onto the little hole on the frame of the keyboard. It's easy to do it one at a time. So we're gonna hook it on this side over here. I'm in, and then I'm gonna take my tool, put it on there pull a little bit away from it and then push it down. And I got it in right there as well. So now we're going to get the awning clips in where they need to go on each of the scissor switch. You wanna make sure that this other support bar is pushed 
up because when we press our key down, it's going to line up and clip onto that as well. And then rotate that key away from you, push it gently away from you, and then pull it towards you with a little bit of pressure on where those awning clips are, which are one here and one here. So I'm pulling towards me, and then I'm going to press down on the top of the key. The awning clips are engaged. You can see that the bottom of the key is secure. The lobster clips on the top are engaged, and I pressed around and it clipped in on top of all of that support bar for that space bar. That is the tutorial on removing the keycaps and the keys off of the Dell laptop computer. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments section. If you have any problems, let me know so I can improve my tutorials and make better ones or different ones for you in the future. I will have one showing problems you're gonna come across with the scissor switch, how to reinstall that if one of them pops off, which will probably happen. So make sure to check out that video in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.